This is the second video of two that covers the food that uh, you see in the Black Cat Cafe. And let's get things started with spaghetti. For the spaghetti, I started by making the noodles. So I mixed my clay, I looked at actual noodles and uh, used a lot of translucent clay and some yellow. And then I put the clay in an extruder that makes it so much easier. And the extruders, if you don't have one, they're not expensive. You can get one for yeah, around, around $25. And you get all these templates and it just makes life a lot easier. And so I used the one with the smallest holes to make these noodles. And I uh, selected the dish that I was going to put it on and then I uh, added the noodles to the dish and then that that way I had my area contained at where I needed to put everything. Then I could lift it off the dish and put it on a piece of parchment paper because that's what I'm going to have to do. I can't put the plastic dish in to, to bake it so I'm going to have to have it off of that. And, and now I know I just build up my spaghetti from there. The next thing I'm doing is making my meatballs and I'm using a brown for that. And after I rolled out the little balls, I used a tool with a ball on the end of it to add texture to the meatballs to make it look a little bit more like meat. And next I started on my sauce and I'm using three colors. I'm using a red, an orange, and kind of a brownish red. And I scraped the chalk or, uh, or you call, some people call them pastels. You, you scrape the chalk into, uh, onto this lid and then I added liquid clay, translucent liquid clay to it and mixed it up and made the beginning of my sauce. And kind of the colors depend on how, if you look at spaghetti sauce, sometimes it's a little bit more orange, sometimes it's a little bit more red. So just kind of whatever you like. And um, then to give a little texture to the sauce, I added a little bit of sand. And so you can just keep adding sand until you feel like you have enough. And then I drizzled that uh, on top of the, uh, the spaghetti that I've been building. And then I went back to the same uh, sauce. And the first time I drizzled it on, it was more red. The second time I added a little bit more orange to the, uh, to the, to the sauce and then I drizzled some of that over it. So it kind of gave it a little bit more dimension with the two, the two colors of just a different shade. The next thing I decided is I need Parmesan cheese. So again, I, I used just a little bit of uh, yellow, a lot less than I did with the uh, noodles and a lot of translucent clay because uh, Parmesan cheese is very, very translucent. And again, I actually look at the real food to help me get to the color. And I chopped it up really small and uh, sprinkled that on top of the spaghetti. And the leftover I put in a little bowl to go onto the table with the spaghetti. Then the last thing I did is I cut up some green very, very fine and uh, put that on top of the spaghetti to be like parsley. And then that all went in the oven. I baked it and then uh, glued it onto the plate. And that was the completed spaghetti. Now for the salad, I kind of started the same way as the spaghetti. I figured out what kind of plate I was going to use. And then I wanted to make a big piece of lettuce for the bottom. And that lettuce served two purposes. One, just because it looked good for the salad. But two, it gave me something to lift everything off that plate um, when I needed to bake it. So um, I just uh, chose a green. You know, there's so many colors in, in, in leafy vegetables. So, you know, there's a whole spectrum of greens that you could use. So... I chose this one and I added a lot of translucent clay in that and I laid it into the dish and then I kind of just pinched it up and kind of pinched the edges just to give it a little bit more interest and the piece was bigger than the plate and that was on purpose so that I could do that. So that's my base and now I'm going to add, you might think of as cabbage or something and I had two other colors and that the, the, uh, the purple color is actually the same color I'm, as I'm going to use for the grapes as this, and the same with the green. And um, I just rolled that out and cut it into little strips and started laying it on each side of the salad. And then next I decided to add cucumbers. So I'm rolling out a piece of uh, green clay and then the center of the cucumber, this is one where I'm using a very light green and I'm adding lots of translucent um, clay to go in that because if you look at a cucumber, it's very, very translucent. And then I'm just laying that in the middle of the clay and rolling it and then cutting it like you would a cane. And then to give it a little bit more of a look of a, of a cucumbers, I'm using the tool again, the ball tool, just to poke some indentations in it that would represent seed. And so um, I laid that onto my salad. Then the next thing I wanted to do were um, uh, bell pepper rings. And so I ended up using this cutter. It's like a flower shape. And 
I've rolled out some clay a little bit thicker than I wanted the ring to be. I punched it out, so the first thing on the left you can see when I punched it. Then I used my finger and I smashed it down. And that's why you want to make it a little thicker because you're going to be spreading it out. Then that made it big enough for me to punch inside of that again. And then that gave me my ring. And so I, um, I did that for the red and then I also put uh, yellow bell peppers on that. And then you can see the two of them sitting on the top of that. And now I decided to add some egg. And just like with the cucumber, I rolled out some clay. Um, now the egg part, the off-white part, again, lots of translucent clay in that to get it um, to look more like, like the egg whites are. And then the yellow in the, in the inside. Now the yellow in an egg, you know, there's the, some eggs are very light. Some have a darker yellow. So whatever you, whatever you like. And that I did not use any translucent clay in because that is a very matte look, the, the yolk of an egg when it's cooked. And so then I rolled that up and sliced it out and then um, put that on there. But I did add a little bit of texture to uh, the uh, yellow of the egg. So I did use a pin and just poke it and, and pull it up a little bit because as you look inside a, an egg, you'll, you, know, you know that it's, it's got a little bit of texture in the, in the yolk. And then um, I baked all that and after it came out of the, oh, actually, I actually put some cheese on there too. I had uh, cut up some more cheese from that cheese brick and sprinkled that on there. And then I baked it, took it off the plate using that, um, using that first bit of lettuce as, as a way of lifting it up, baked it, and then I came back in with glossy accents and added uh, a little bit of glossy accents to the things that would look glossier, like for instance, um, the cucumbers and then also the, uh, the white of the egg. And there you have a salad. So here you have the components that go into making the ham sandwich. Now the bread, that's the baguette bread that I covered at the very beginning of the first video. And so I made it in the mold, I cut it apart, and I also um, used the chalk to give it some color. Um, and then the, the thing that you see below it for the lettuce, instead of uh, making lettuce, I just used these little pieces of leaves that came off of a vine, a little miniature vine. And by the time you get in the sandwich, you, don't, you can't tell that, it's, that it, uh, it's these leaves. It looks like it's lettuce. Then above that you see onion rings, and I used the same trick for the onion rings as I did in the salad for the bell pepper rings. So I punched out a round, uh, white, uh, translucent white. Now you know just just about like um, uh, the same amount of clay that I used for the Parmesan cheese, except I didn't uh, I, I didn't use yellow. I used white instead, and so um, I uh, rolled it out, punched out. A couple of round circles and then press them down to make them bigger and then use the same punch on the inside to punch out the center and that left me with rings. Now the tomatoes, you can see that I have stuff in the middle of the tomatoes. I really didn't need to do that because by the time I got them on the sandwich you can't see anything but the outside of the tomato. So if I did it again, unless you're going to see the tomato on a salad, I wouldn't spend any time on the center of the tomato. And then I had the cheese brick so I cut off a couple pieces of cheese for that. Now the ham, uh, the way I approached that is I looked at ham and tried to figure out the color. And so I worked, it's kind of a purpley color ham is. And so I mixed that and then added a lot of translucent clay to it and then rolled it out very thin and cut it in strips and then folded it back on itself, um, uh, back and forth on itself, kind of like you would see them do in a deli. And then I, uh, to put it together to bake it, I couldn't bake the leaves with the rest of the sandwich. So I baked the bottoms by themselves. I stacked everything up with the top on it and then baked that. And once that was done, then I glued the leaves on the bottom and then glued the top to the bottom. And then I had uh, my completed ham sandwich. Now I'm gonna cover the really small things. And the first one I'm gonna do is the cocktail onion. If you can see these, they're very translucent. And I start with the translucent clay and just a tiny, tiny bit of white and I'm going to blend that together and just ever so little because if you'll you can see a picture there of real cocktail onions you can see just how translucent they look and once I get that blended together I'm going to take a small amount and roll that into a ball as round as I can get it and then once I've got it in a ball you'll notice that they have they're like little 
parts that stick out on each end. And so I'm just going to pinch each end of the ball. If you can see that, this is so small, my fingers are probably in the way. You can see it's going to, it's going to uh, bake a little more translucent than that, but you can see how I've just got some little bitty things going on each end, and that's all it is. And then, like I say, it, it will, when it, after it bakes, it's going to come out and it's going to look like that. Um, so that's that, uh, olive. So for an olive, again, I am getting a very, very small piece. And again, making it round. And if you want to, um, you, I, I, a lot of times I, I use the, uh, a little cutter to um, cut out equal amounts so that they're all the same. But for the purposes of this, I just uh, to demonstrate this, I don't need to do that. So once it's round, then all I'm going to do is put it on it, lay it down, and then just roll it this way. And that's going to make it just ever so slightly oblong. And you kind of want it maybe a little bit uh, more pinched on one side or the other, kind of almost like an egg. And then once you get this oblong shape, you're going to take a tool like this with a point on the end of it and just make a little hole where the pit would be taken out. And that also gives you an opportunity to work on shaping it a little bit more. And of course you can see from the picture how the finished ones look. Now if, like for the cheese tray, I didn't... Um, I didn't add any, um, I guess it's pimento is probably what it was stuffed with. But if, you, um, if you're going to use them like as a cocktail, uh, a cocktail uh, one, you'll want to get a little tiny bead of red and just stuff that right in that hole. And then that will give you the olive. And then, of course, the black olives, the same way, just pinched a little bit. Make a round ball make it a little bit oblong and in terms of these because these were on the tray with the cheeses I did not um, did not stuff them and then when you push that sometimes you have to go back in and maybe shape it a little bit and then that would be your uh, olives now um, the grapes now the grapes is when I should mention with with both of the black and both olives I did add, I did add some translucent clay to them because they do have kind of a little bit of translucency to them, not as much as say grapes. And so the grapes, this this is actually the same green that I used for uh, the inside of the cucumber, and it has a lot of translucent clay and kind of more like the butter. And so I want to pinch a little bit off, and I'm going to do this pretty much the same thing as I did with the olive. I'm going to make it round, and then um, I'm going to roll it on the side and just kind of get a little bit more of a grape shape. And that's my grape. And then I, I used kind of a purple color for the for the uh, kind of red grapes. And of course, grapes have a lot of variation in their, in their color. And then I placed all these on their plates and then I did paint everything with glossy accents to just give it a little bit more shine. All of the things that I've shown you, I did that with. And then uh, the thing is the cherry. Now I, didn't, I don't add any translucent, translucent clay to that. And again, I'm making a ball. And then I'm going to come in with a pen and make that little crease that you see. You can see that. And then, um, as you can see from the picture, I cut, off, I cut a little piece of wire and stick that in to be the uh, stem of the cherry and bake it that way. Now, for all the citrus that you see in the the uh, for the for the cocktails all I've done is taken these clays you've seen me use these before or, or canes you've seen me use these before and I just slice them up I sliced uh, the whole ones off and then sliced them in half and then I just put those in the tray and then of course I use these two for the cocktail glasses themselves when you put them on the glasses you'll want to use a whole one and you'll just want to create cut a V in it so it will fit right over the edge of the glass just like you would if it were an actual real cocktail For the ice cream sundae, I first decided on the container that I was going to use, and that helped me decide how big the balls of ice cream would be. And I used uh, translucent clay and white and just a teeny, teeny bit of tan just to make it just like a little bit off-white like, like French vanilla ice cream is. And then I used crumpled up foil to put texture uh, into the balls. And then I uh, 
I put them in the uh, container and kind of pushed them together just a little bit so they'd stay in that shape and then bake them. And uh, then I put them back in the container and then I mixed up the sauce and it's made up of uh, glossy accents and alcohol inks. And I'll show you that when I show you the drinks because I did the drinks the same way. And then you saw me do the cookie, the little uh, little wafer-like cookie. You saw me do that in the first of the first tutorial, uh, food tutorial. And then um, the glob on the top, the whipped cream, that is just air dry clay. Um, so it's real fluffy. So it has that feeling like it's like it's uh, whipped cream. So what I did for all the drinks is uh, first decided whether or not you want ice or not, and you can purchase this little, these little ice cubes. Alpha Stamps sells them in these little packages. And so if you want your ice, then go ahead and add that to your glass before you do anything else. And then to make the liquid, because you want the liquid to be translucent, I'm working with alcohol ink and I am working with glossy accents. And I like putting it on foil. You want something obviously that's not, it's not gonna seep through, but it's because it can hold its shape and I need to make something that I can use to pour into the glass. And of course the glossy accents, it'll dry clear and because it's a glue, um, I can mix it and then pour it in there and it'll set up. And then I want the uh, alcohol ink because the alcohol ink is going to uh, keep the transparency. And of course you can use whatever kind of colors you want. You can, you know, I used red for one of them and I used yellow for another. And then I, for the Coke, I used like a brown. For the two wines, um, I used, uh, for, I did red wine, and uh, one of them I used uh, just a kind of a dark red by itself, and, the, and then the other dark one I used uh, red, and then I added uh, a darker color in a raisin color, and that kind of gave me a little bit darker red, um, darker red uh, wine. So once I get this all mixed up, then I'm just going to take this and pour it in my drink. Now, glossy accents, once it starts to dry and the liquid dries out of it, it is going to sink a little bit in the middle of the glass, but the alcohol ink will have stained the area where it was. So all you have to do is just go back in and add a little bit more, just glossy accents, you don't have to add any more color, and it will take on the color of everything around it because everything around it on the sides of the glass and then below it will be the color that you used. And then now you can garnish it. And because it's transparent, I don't know if you can see it that well here, but you can still see the ice cubes in there. Uh, I think on the Coke uh, with the sandwiches, I think that you can really see the ice cubes really well in that picture. Um, and then if you want to do something like I did with the uh, lemon drink and you want to edge it with something that, like to be sugar or to be, um, to be uh, um uh, salt. I, what I did is I took some of this uh, Twinklets diamond dust and I crushed it even farther because it's still kind of um, big for a little glass like that. So I just um, smashed it, even, got a little bit of it, smashed it even more. And then uh, after this was dry, I put a little glue around the edge, more glossy accents and just dip it in it. And uh, like you would a margarita glass, putting salt on it, uh, just dip it in it and then get that little bit of, um, of the uh, sparkle on the edges. And if you're going to add something like a piece of citrus, you might want to add that first so that you have room to put that, you start putting the, the diamond dust on, then there won't be any room for the citrus. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is exactly the same way I made the strawberry syrup for the Sunday. So I just mixed in uh, the colors that I wanted for the syrup with the glossy accents, and then just instead of pouring it in a glass, I, pour, I poured it all over the Sunday. This wraps up the second part of the food tutorial for the cafe. For more information on the project, the uh, lots and lots of pictures, the supply list, um, details on the project, and information on my new collage sheets, uh, in the description area you'll find the link to my blog post that goes along with this.